Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So in a few previous videos on this channel, we've seen how the availability of external tools can greatly help the problem solving abilities of large language models. If you give them things like the ability to search the web or a calculator or maybe a full language runtime like a Python interpreter, you can get them to solve much more complex problems than if you just depended on their pure language modeling abilities. However, that does beg the question of, in the general case, how would you come up with all these external tools and especially how would you come up with tools that are very tailored to a particular kind of problem that you might not have seen before. And that is the problem the authors in this paper are looking at. They're trying to get rid of this dependency on existing tools that are already available and have the LLM create the tools that it needs for problem solving in its own closed loop. The basic idea is that you look at incoming requests or tasks and you use a few instances of similar requests to make a somewhat general tool. And once you have that reusable tool, you can use it to solve future tasks of the same category. The thing to note is that this framework uses two different LLMs. There's the tool making LLM, and then there's the tool using LLM, the tool maker and the tool user. Now there are two LLMs in this scheme. There's the tool making LLM and the tool using LLM. And the tool making LLM needs to be the more capable one or the more expensive one. Whereas the tool using LLM can be the lighter weight or cheaper LLM. And once you have a reusable tool, you can then use the lighter weight or cheaper tool user LLM to solve your problems. The tool building process can be further broken down into three steps. The first one is to propose a tool, and you can do that by constructing a few shot example with some training samples. And you basically construct a prompt that uses those training samples and asks the LLM to generate, let's say, some Python code to solve that problem or that class of problems. Now, once you have that code, you can then further use the LLM to write unit tests for that code and verify that it works as you expect. And the final stage is to wrap it up so that when you get further tasks in that category, you can write a prompt that will map the solution of that task to calling this new tool rather than asking the LLM to solve it. So let's look at a concrete example of how this might work. Here's a simple problem which, given a few ordering conditions, is asking for the order of a specific item that satisfies those conditions. So when you want to propose a tool to solve this class of problems, you will construct a prompt like this with a few shot prompt to ask it to generate a Python function. In this case, it outputs a Python function that takes some objects and conditions on those objects and tries to find the order that satisfies those conditions among all the permutations of that object. Now to do this, you would want a more powerful model like say GPT-4, but you only have to do it once when you're making the tool. Now, once you have this code, you can then switch over to a different lighter weight LLM like GPT 3.5, for example, to then use this tool to solve further problems of this class. In this case, you've used a prompt to reframe further problems of this ordering type in a way that can be solved by this Python code. You're trying to re-express those conditions as inputs to this Python method. And the final piece of the puzzle is that you need some sort of logic, which they call a dispatcher, to see if a tool exists for a class of problems. And if it does, then send the problem to the tool using LLM. And if it doesn't, then try to 
construct a tool for that class of problems with the tool making LLM. They ran some benchmarks where they used GPT 3.5 as the lightweight model as the tool user and GPT 4 as the heavier weight model for making new tools. And what they found was with this combination of a lightweight model and a heavyweight model, you could have the lighter weight model, GPT 3.5, match or beat the performance of GPT 4 on these classes of problems. And it even outperformed chain of thought prompting, which is usually a pretty effective prompting style for these kinds of reasoning problems. And the overall cost of doing this is much lower because once you've built the tools using the heavier weight model, you're only going to be using the lighter weight tool using model. Now, this entire scheme only works if your more powerful LLM is successful at building these tools. And in this table, we see that using GPT-4, for most classes of problems, they are able to have a decent rate of success at generating new tools. So that was a quick look at a paper that tries to automate even the process of building new tools that LLMs can use to solve problems and shows how by using those tools, a smaller, cheaper LLM can then match or beat the performance of a much larger, much more expensive LLM. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing. Please like the video and I will see you all next time. Thank you very much.